What's going on you guys? Pet Platypus here. It's time for the final installment of my top 10 anime and manga as of 2015. Twas a long journey, but we are finally here. Number one, and that is a tie between Fairy Tail and Naruto. Hold on a second. Oh, that's my top 10 worst list. My bad. Top 10 greatest list. One Piece. It was a joke. It was a joke. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to explain that. But you never know when a fucking fairy tale or Naruto fanboy is gonna watch this video and complain. So it was a joke. I. They probably would be on my top ten worst list, but probably not number one. I'm not sure. But anyways, One Piece. I hate that I have to explain that, but just some people, even though they usually don't watch my videos, you never know. Anyways, this video is about One Piece, obviously. One Piece, I mean, where to even begin? I mean, amazing characters, amazing story, great mystery, amazing fights with creative abilities, amazing world building, if I didn't already say that. Just <clears throat> great comedy, just everything One Piece tries to do, it really, really excels at it. With a couple of shortcomings, but yeah, and if you think I sounded like a fanboy just now, wait for this next one. I do honestly think One Piece is, are you ready? One of the best uh, adventure stories ever written from a literary perspective. It's so fun. They go to so many creative places. It really is, it really does feel like an adventure. Like, Dragon Ball, <clears throat> it's called an adventure. Like, the whole series is called a big adventure. And some of it is, but at a point, you know, and I'm not going to say, like, oh, there's no story or it's all action or none of that crap. But when you do get to, like, the uh, Cell stuff and the Android stuff and when you get to like the Majin Buu stuff it is less of an adventure and One Piece really always feels like an adventure everywhere they go is always different and unique and creative and yeah when you just look at like some of the best written you know adventure stories I think One Piece is right up there with creativity it takes inspiration from those stories but I mean some like the Skypea arc alone is almost like its own self-contained adventure story like some random pirate crew that you don't need to know too much about because I don't think they go into too much of the character development in that arc. And they just happen upon the Sky Island in their adventure, and this is their adventure there, and it tells the full story of the origin of the... What, what the hell was it called? The Upper Yard and everything, and just... Yeah, Skypea is, of course, an awesome arc. But yeah, One Piece, and the narration also helps the adventure feel. Oda really gives it that. It's just... It's such a fun series, like, unlike Dragon Ball, which I love Dragon Ball, but I don't mind that it gets more serious over time and still squeezes in the comedy, One Piece decides to strike a balance between the two, and I think that's a good idea, because that can backfire. I mean, just look at, like, Naruto, where Naruto decided to take itself very seriously for a long time, and then when it decided to squeeze in comedy again, if you've read, like, the last arc, when you get the Obito flashback, and... It's like, you got shit jokes, and it's like, no, this is not the time for this. Why are you doing this humor now? With One Piece, they're able to make it work really, really well. And uh, I give Oda a lot of props for that, because that's not an easy thing to do, to really balance humor and seriousness. And some people may not like it, some people may think it's too big a shift in, cho uh, in tone, but I think it's really, really well done. But yeah, it's hard to think, like... Because I already mentioned, like, the characters are great. The Straw Hats are all developed in their own way, especially when you look at this one filler arc. Now, I know it's filler, but when you look at this one filler arc where all the Straw Hats lose their memories and go in separate ways, you really do see how much they changed upon joining Luffy and how much they've changed up to that point in the series, which I believe was right before Water 7. You know, Nami goes back to hating pirates and wanting to get the hell out of there, and... Usopp's a lot more full of himself, and I think the only ones who didn't lose their memory were, like, Luffy and fucking Robin, I think. It's really interesting, and, uh, yes, yeah, so they do grow and change over time, <laughs> or rather, rather than change a ton, the characters, you find out more about them. You later on see a more motherly side of, like, say, Nami because of how she was raised by her adopted mother, and you see different aspects to Sanji over time, and different, well, Sanji, kinda, he's a little one-note, he's probably one of my least favorite Straw Hats, but you do find out more about these characters over time, more about their personalities, and they do feel really fleshed out. Uh, I wouldn't say they're as well-developed in terms of, like, they're changing their personalities and changing over time as, say, the Dragon Ball characters, but I would say they're probably equally as fleshed out and equally as three-dimensional 
as the Dragon Ball characters. So yeah, the Straw Hats are fucking awesome. Um, like, the only ones I, I won't even say I don't like, but the only ones I would put on a don't like list, like my least favorites, would be like Nami, Chopper, and like Sanji. That would be like my least favorite three. Other than that, they're all pretty much fucking awesome. So, yeah, but, uh... I don't know. I, it's hard to like because because everyone praises the series, of course, for its phenomenal world building, the foreshadowing, all that crazy stuff that Oda does. How unique it is. How you just don't see certain things coming. Uh, I've actually been rereading the series a little on the slower side. Uh, one thing I didn't I forgot to mention in my Dragon Ball video was that Dragon Ball is so rereadable. For someone who knows the series like the back of his hand, like me. To reread the series and want to just keep turning the page. Just, it's so good. The manga is so amazing. And they're only 15 page chapters, so maybe when they came out on a weekly basis, they were a little too short. But when it comes to rereading in volume form, fucking perfect. Gr amazing reread value that One Piece does not have. But have been rereading One Piece. And its reread value, I mean, of course, is still good because it's still a great series. But yeah, and I'm about to start the Alabasta arc. Love Alabasta. Pro maybe top five? arcs in One Piece, because my top five, I'm trying to think in no order, there's Arlong Park, yeah, I'd put it that high, uh, Dressrosa, even though I haven't even finished it, um, Marine Ford, and Ennis Lobby, and how many was that? Arlong Park, Marine Ford, Ennis Lobby, Dressrosa, even though I haven't finished it, that's four, maybe Alabaster would be number five, but Skype is pretty damn good too, I don't know. One Piece has so many arcs, and they're all so fucking good. I mean, I'd say my least favorite is probably the Davy back, but that's not even because I don't like it. It's just not super eventful. It's just kind of fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a really fucking good series. The fact that Oda's had it go on for so damn long, and it's still maintaining its quality. I mean, a lot of series, like Naruto, like Fairy Tail, I think a lot of people will admit, even if they like those series... They'll admit that they declined in quality over time, and uh, One Piece, really, to me, it hasn't declined at all. It's always throwing something new at you. It's always throwing something creative. Even when people try to say Oda sticks to the formula of going to a country or going to a village and saving it from the enemy and being a savior or whatever. I mean, yeah, that happens a lot in One Piece, but then you also have stuff like Marineford, stuff like Impel Down, stuff like Thriller Bark, stuff like Sabote Archipelago, stuff like Water 7... Stuff like any Lobby, you know, I can just keep naming arcs that aren't that formula, so... Yeah, but, uh, really, just, again, like, I sound like a broken record, but I fucking love One Piece. It'll probably always be my number one. I don't think anything's ever gonna pass it. Dragon Ball comes close in a lot of areas, but One Piece as a whole, just more creative world, more creative character designs, more creative uh, abilities. Dragon Ball, I love the powers, but... They aren't the most creative. I mean, you can do a lot of things with key, don't get me wrong. It's more versatile than just you can shoot energy. You know, they do incorporate it into their punches and kicks and everything, but yeah, I definitely still put one piece above uh and in story. I think some I think some series that try to surpass Dragon Ball in terms of story usually end up having way too many plot holes or it's just not that good of a story comparatively. And uh, One Piece just fucking nails it. It just nails every aspect. The mystery, the adventure, the action. I mean, I will say some panels are a little hard to tell what's going on. I think the anime handles that better. But I'm one of those rare people that prefers the anime over the manga. Despite the pacing, uh, the animation really never bothers me. But despite the pacing, um, mostly because I don't see anything wrong with the animation, to be honest. But... Anyway, I mean, yeah, a couple parts that are, like, kind of fucking choppy, but, I mean, fuck, it's a weekly series with hundreds of episodes. Anyway, like I was saying, despite, you know, the pacing and everything, I do prefer the anime over the manga. I think they nail the feel of One Piece super, super well. Um, but, yeah, there's really not much else to say. It's just amazing that Oda wrote this series and created this incredible adventure story, and I hope to be alive when this shit finishes. Show it to my kids if I ever have any kids or something like that. You know what I mean. It's just a really, really good story. Uh, yeah, I believe Oda said he's never going to do a series this long again after One Piece is over. I don't fucking blame him. The series is probably going to be a thousand chapters or more. Uh, it's going to get up there in like the Hajime no Ippo numbers easily and probably longer. I don't know. Well, it depends on how long Ippo is going to go. Fuck. But anyways, I'm kind of rambling at this point. You guys know I love One Piece. It's been my number one. I always talk about it. 
Um, I do, I don't review it because, yeah, like I said, I'm not, you know, caught up, so I don't know what's going on, so I'm not just going to review chapters or episodes or anything, but it's also a series that I like to just, well, for one thing, I like the English dub, and I love to watch the English dub with my friend whenever the sets come out, and, uh, on top of that, <clears throat> it's just, it's just a series I'd rather just enjoy on, in my own time rather than sitting down and analyzing it in reviews and stuff. I mean, that can help you appreciate a series more, but for me, I just like to have One Piece be that series that I just don't need to, like, talk about on a weekly basis and analyze or anything. Not that I don't have my analytical views on it, it's just, you know. But anyways, this video's probably long enough, so with all that being said, thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you guys think of One Piece and what's your number one on your top ten anime and manga of all time list. You can give this video a thumbs up. That would help me out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram or add me on PSN. I'm Pat Platypus on both. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.